everybody. Welcome to our Pro Plus training series again. And today we are focusing on ratings and reviews. My name is Julie Zamsky, and I am the Commercial Marketing Director with Sherwin-Williams. And I am joined with an amazing co-host. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gabby Torres. I am also a Marketing Director here with Sherwin-Williams. Fantastic. Thank you, Gabby. So I would like to welcome our two guests today. Thank you so much, Brandon Pierpont and Juan Vasquez from Illusions Painting in California. Would you two like to introduce yourselves? I'll let Brandon go ahead and start. Sure. Yep. I am Brandon Pierpont, uh, founder of Painter Marketing Pros. We are a full service digital marketing agency, partners of the PCA, and we partner with ambitious residential and commercial painting company owners who have long term growth goals. Super excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. And Juan? Man, his introduction was so great. Um, well, my name is Juan, and I am the founder of uh, Illusions Painting out of California. Uh, we're in the uh, Monterey Bay area, and we mainly do residential in our area, and just very happy to be here and um, get to hear all the great things you have to say. Fantastic. Thank you both. And we're just going to dive right into this. You know, we're going to go right into the topic. So I'll ask both of you, why do you feel reviews are important and how do they impact your business? Sure. So I, I guess uh, Juan, I'll kick off here if, if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. So reviews, I mean, we're going to explore this topic in depth, obviously. So I'm going to keep this real high level. Reviews are really the best way that you can, number one, generate lead flow for your painting company, and then number two, actually convert that lead flow. So regardless of where you get the lead, reviews online are an extremely important conversion factor, meaning if you have a really solid online reputation, you tend to be able to convert more leads into actual projects, and you tend to be able to charge more for those projects. That's awesome. So another question here, how can you all as a contractor start building customer ratings and reviews? Juan, you want to kick it off? So how can you start doing that? Um, so um, we kind of work in a smaller niche of the uh, of the industry. So um, we don't do a lot of smaller projects. Most of our projects are are you know months or years. You know they're very large homes. So we don't we never use um, you know reviews in the past. But I think now, you know, when we came around and listening how it really benefits to these other companies in larger cities, we basically the way we've been doing it is we just go out to our clients and, and ask, you know, if the best thing you can do for us in our business is leave us a review. And so now we have incorporated them into our website and it's changed everything. You know, it's just uh, people want to see reviews. You are more credible. Yeah. with reviews for sure thank you so Juan. I, I have kind of a, a holistic answer to this it's ba basically what you should be doing from the moment a lead comes in to what you should actually be doing with that review so Perfect. when a lead comes in you start with this by providing a world-class customer experience and that doesn't really start with when you actually are working on the project it starts with what happens when a lead comes into your ecosystem right <laughs> whether that lead is through google whether it's through social media whether it's a referral whether it's a yard sign, however you got there, how are they treated? How quickly are they reached out to? How do they feel? And have you set proper expectations with them, right? About getting the estimate set when you're actually gonna set, uh, conduct the estimate and following through on what you said you're going to do. When you actually book the project, and you're actually working with them. I always encourage our partners, set the expectation. Say, hey, I wanna make sure that we exceed your expectations. My goal here is to be able to provide such a remarkable service for you that you feel I have earned a five-star review from you. Does that work for you if I try to if I try to earn that throughout this project? Set the expectation, right? And then throughout the project, obviously provide exceptional service, right? Do a quality paint project. Don't don't skimp on any of that, and earn it, earn the review at the end. Get their feedback. Hey, how was it? How how was the project? Was there anything we could have done better? Are you are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you are you you know ecstatic with what we did? You are okay. I am so happy to hear that. You know, as I mentioned before, one of the ways we really grow our business and monitor. Uh, how we're doing and how happy our customers are is whether or not we're able to obtain reviews. It would really mean the world to me if you'd be willing to leave one. You are? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. So he, there's actually a card that I have right here uh, with a QR code. Actually, we'll go ahead and link, uh, pull up our review 
uh, profile, our Google business profile. Can I actually walk you through this right now before I take off? Yeah, okay, great. Right. Do it with them live. If they don't do that, have a customer happiness call the next day. Have someone from your team. If you're small, you're the owner. Call them personally the next day. Say, hey, you know, I understand our, our crew just finished your project yesterday. I want to make sure everything went according to plan. You know, are you happy? Is there anything we could do better? Do we need to do anything else? No. Okay, man, it, it would really be so great if you could leave us a review. And then also leverage automations, right? So every partner we work with, we employ a CRM. It's a, a reputation management component, right? It's a lot of fancy words to basically say we secure a review, right? Via text, via emails, by by pre-built messaging sequences. Uh, Drip Jobs, Tanner Mullen, nice job. Um, is a great software for doing this, but employ automations, employ systems in your painting company because so many companies aren't. They're easy. It's not a very steep learning curve. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but the load it takes off and the consistency with what you can generate reviews and results makes it well worth it. Yeah. Can, can I can I add something to that? And this is from yes. the painters, uh, from the you know um, painters' point of view. Absolutely. I think it's amazing what Brandon just said, because um, sometimes we just believe, you know, we're just going to do the best job we can and they're just going to notice. But the way you put it, it's so amazing because it's like, look, you're setting the expectations like you are going to do this regardless. But understand that you are asking something from them in a very unique way. And I, I, I am going to start using actually what you just said, <laughs> just setting the expectations, which is as painters, we don't do it. You know, in the industry, we're like, oh, know whether you're shy or whatever that you don't have you're not used to doing that i think setting the expectations from the beginning really sets up everything so i feel um, like a lot of people great. feel nervous you know it's yeah. like okay you did the pro i mean people are nervous even to ask for the remaining payment you know there's, there's yeah. all kinds of anxiety yeah, at the end like right. hey you, you owe me money you know how do i get the money and i think you can solve that variety of ways like hey we, we take check or credit card what would you prefer right don't even ask for them for the payment transition the question to something else but that's another topic but when you're actually trying to get the reviews, if you start out and, and it's really a coming at it from a point of the customer, if, if you come at it at the end, it's a point of you. Like, hey, I did this yes. project. I want the review. It's going to help me. Please do this effort and give me the review. Whereas if you start it, hey, you know what? I want to knock this out of the park for you. I want you to be so happy that, that you feel I warrant this. Is that OK? Can I try to make you this happy to, to make sure that you feel I deserve a five star review? Now it's a totally different conversation and dynamic. Definitely. I agree 100% with that. Yes, I love um, talking about the process of it all and setting those standards within your company and just like, hey, this is how we're going to do this and get these reviews. I think we do such a good job as an industry of kind of setting the bidding and estimating and all of these things. And then it's that after we always kind of forget about we get, we get the job, we do the job. And then it's like, how do we set those standards after? So I love that yeah. you walked us through that. That's yeah. that's the widget, right? That's the mm -hmm. actual that's the actual thing. But what you have to focus on is the business, the experience, what surrounds the widget. Just make sure the widget's good, and then you have to focus on what surrounds it. So, uh, talking about here customer reviews, and I know um, asking since the beginning of the project, have you ever received a negative review? And if you did, what did you do? Why? Uh, have you ever gotten one of those? Oh, okay. I'll, You've never gotten one of those. I'll do, <laughs> never. I'll do the bad never. and you do, I'll do the bad and you do the good. <laughs> yes. Um, well, you know, um, probably, you know, we were we were not so big into the reviews, so we weren't really getting any reviews, so it wasn't really into us. But we do have just personal, you know, comments from your clients that they're probably not good, and so that could have been like, look, you know, your guys left a mess or. Just simple like that. So what we did in our part was just um, fix it, you know, talk to them. What can I do for you? How can, where did we fail? How can we do our job better and and, and fix things? Not not an extra cost, not everything, just doing it right. And I think if, with a review will be the same thing too. You know, um, I think let's say you get a bad review, answer it. You know, you may say, hey, you know, we I really apologize that this happened. Um, any, you know, our goal is to do our best. Uh, what is it that we can do to fix it? And if you can fix it, why not? You know, and I, I think that will be the best way instead of just saying, ah, forget it. You know, I didn't care about the person. So that will be the that will be the ideal, I think, to do, you know, and we've done that personally. Lately, we haven't had a bad one. I mean, knock on wood. You know, you want to, so we're shooting for that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I think negative reviews are unfortunately a part of business ownership, right? No matter how, mm -hmm. no matter how good of a job you do, eventually one day, if you're in business long enough, you're going to get one. That's just a fact. Yes. Um, yep. So the, the step one is respond to it, right? Like Juan said, you have to respond to it immediately. Uh, leave your number. Say, hey, we want to make this right. You know, please feel free to reach out to us. We're ser search your database. You know, hopefully you're, you're keeping some kind of records or CRM or something so you can actually figure out who that person is. And then you can proactively call them, try to make it right. A lot of times you can get them to take that review down. But I also want to touch on sometimes that review is not real, right? So we've seen a, an increase in fraudulent negative reviews uh, for some of our partners. You know, we're with partners across the U.S. and Canada, and we've seen this, this rise in fraudulent reviews. And it does happen for a couple of reasons. One could be competitor. Right. A competitor, you know, could even be a personal enemy, just decides that they want to go on and try to hurt your business. Uh, the second is that there's a, there's a whole ecosystem of buying reviews. I uh, don't recommend it. Never do it. But there is an ecosystem. And as part of that ecosystem, people have to warm up um, basically Google accounts. So they they yeah. they create these Google accounts and they warm them up through leaving fraudulent reviews all over the place and essentially build up a profile to make it more likely that the review is going to stick. And sometimes you're basically a victim of a drive by. You know, they go and they leave you a one, two, three star review uh, just because they want, they're trying to build up their profile. So the if there is a fraudulent review, you want to report it, right? You want to mark it as spam. There's three little dots next to the review. You click it. Uh, there's a drop down. You mark it as off topic. That will sometimes work, sometimes won't. It takes about three days. If that review is not removed, there's another link that Google rolled out recently uh, specifically because this is a rise in fraudulent reviews, specifically targeting these reporting of fraudulent reviews. The the link is not going to make sense for me to say it right now. It's a pretty long link. No one's going to be able to, to remember it. So we'll just include it in the in the comments and include it in the resources that Sherwin provides with this um, to get rid of those fraudulent reviews. And then two other things to remember is bury it. So if you're consistently getting positive reviews, even if it's a real review, maybe you messed up. Maybe you actually did mess up. That happens, right? Business Businesses are not perfect. Or maybe the customer had unrealistic expectations. It goes back to how you're setting your expectations and goes back to pre-qualifying your customer, really. Bury it with positive reviews because you generate so many positive reviews that ultimately it's not going to really matter. And then ultimately, remember that the occasional negative review is actually a good thing. I would rather you have a 4.8 or 4.9 star rating than a 5. 5 looks fake. Nobody's perfect. If you haven't gotten any negative reviews, you're either new in business or you're basically just faking your profile. To show that you're a human, right? Yeah. Show your human. Nobody's perfect. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about five star reviews. I'm going to start to think, hmm, maybe maybe these are not 100% legitimate. I think that's fair. I think that's really fair. I think that human element, for sure, it comes out. I mean, if I see a bunch of five star reviews, I kind of question it. Eh, where is it? So, so when you look at reviews, now Juan, you talked about, hey, we put them on our website now, you know, we've our positive reviews. Did you see a change in your um, your leads or your call activity for work when you started putting those, publishing those positive reviews on your website? Immediately. Like you yeah. have people that just notice um, it, you know, and of course, you know, I've learned from the pros, like Brandon here, I don't put the whole review. We just use small you know, fractions of it and it's just, they're put it in the right place and um, just people tend to gravitate to those. And so now they're like, okay, let me see what else I can find out about them. So it, it's amazing. We've definitely seen a, a big, big shift. Yep. Brandon, do you have any stats or anything that you can share that talks about or says, hey, percentage of work generated by positive reviews is X or is there anything that you can provide insight on? Yeah, so it's it's hard to say the percentage of work is, is generated by reviews is X because reviews yeah. by themselves aren't, aren't really a, a lead flow source, right? So you should be mm -hmm. tracking your sources. You should have tracking numbers. And I'm not going to get too, I'm not going to geek out like crazy here, but you should be tracking whether they're coming from Facebook or Yard Signs or Google ads or local service ads or your SEO, wherever they're coming from, you should some have some idea uh, of those numbers. In terms of reviews, I'd say the most direct way to track it and it's still you know it's not really the most scientific way but reviews are going to rank your google business profile higher so if you find that there's not really a whole lot that you're doing differently with your google business profile but you start yeah. generating five star reviews on a consistent cadence and you're saying hey you know we, we typically are generating three five eight leads per month through google business profile over the past couple months now we're now we're generating 15 20 25 well probably your reviews are really generating that increase 
right? So that's probably the most direct way. Some other statistics, almost 90% of people will check online reviews. This is just a stat, it's a fact, prior to selecting a home service provider. So e even repeat and referrals, they're gonna go check you out. So if people, if nine out of 10 people are going to look at your review, you know, at that point, it, it's not as much a lead generation, uh, it's more of a conversion factor, right? Whether or not they decide to move forward, 84% of people trust an online review as much as a personal recommendation, which I find kind of odd, but people really do trust these things. And then uh, I'll kind of, another thing you should be generating these consistently because uh, a lot of people, if the review is older than three months old, they really discount it pretty heavily. They want to see the most recent reviews. I know that we talked um, earlier, uh, Juan, you, you used the word, you know, credibility. So based yeah. off of that, do you feel that there is a specific number of Google reviews or, you know, this goes to both of you, that is needed to establish credibility? Um, I don't think there's, I mean, personally, um, like I said, it, it, too be, it belongs to in what part, like, where you are in the industry. You know, if you're doing a lot of repaints, small repaints, and you're constantly on referrals and reviews, and I know there are some uh, companies that they they get leads every day in our particular side of the industry our clients are very selective clients so i think the one or two reviews for us are are as long as they're credible from certain uh persons or carry more credibility than just any review i believe and um for us um we don't have a lot of reviews but we do have enough to where people they're like, oh my God, okay, yeah, you you know, you have the reviews enough. For us, I don't think for us we don't need a lot. I know that maybe for someone else who is doing more production probably will benefit from more, from more. Wouldn't you agree on that, Brandon? Yeah, I would, and and I would say there are kind of two different ways to look at this. So one is the trust element, right? That Juan mentioned, making sure that there are enough reviews that they're recent enough that people still that they value it, that they believe, okay, this is real. If there are two reviews, you know, it could be your your brother-in-law and whoever else, right? Left you the review. In terms of ranking, so you need at least 10 to really move the needle at all. If you have under 10, oh, okay. you basically have zero. Uh, 50 is is an important milestone. And then 100 is where you're significant, right? Mm -hmm. now, again, I don't want to oversimplify this, but if we're just talking numbers, 10, 50, 100, I would focus on that. 10, 50, 100. Great to That's know. That's good to know. Thanks, Brandon. That's good to know. <laughs> Great tip. Didn't know on, that. Guys. little. That's Come a little on, nugget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Put, put 100. Write it on the board. We're going to 100. <laughs> got to talk to the office. They got to they gotta get cranking on those reviews. New goal. <laughs> That's a great way to measure your milestones, right? You have 25, yeah. you know, your average is a 4.8, 4.5. Like, how do you get to 50? You know, how do you get to 75? So those are great milestones you can definitely track. And another metric too, if you know we're talking about milestones, make sure at least at least one out of three of your projects is resulting in a five-star review. I, there are some people who are able to do it north of one out of two. That's exceptional. But you should be aiming for at least one out of three, you get a five-star review. Okay. That's a great tip. I love that. Yeah, it really is. Write that down. I gotta go, I'll be back. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask this to both of you, but um, and Brian, we can start with you. I mean, you've already given us some great tips so far, but if you can think of one to two things that our audience can start doing today that can assist with their rating reviews, like what would that be? Yeah, so. Number one, reach out to your past customers. This can be a little bit tricky because people you served, you know, a year ago, uh, that there, there's a certain kind of way that you're going to need to position that. Otherwise, it's really, really out of left field. If you haven't been doing a good job keeping in touch with your database, you know, your list of past customers, then you have to pretty strategically approach how you're going to reach out to someone a year ago and ask for a review. You can and you should. We know how to do it. Uh, we're actually rolling out a, a promotion for anyone who listens to this podcast. I'll get into that momentarily, but that's number one. Number two, moving forward, do some of the things I said, right? Do some of the things Juan said. Make it a point to ask for a five-star review from every project here on out. Set the expectation up front. Utilize whatever technology is going to help you make sure you're consistently asking for those reviews in a professional manager, uh, uh, professional manner, excuse me. Establish the relationship and the trust up front 
and then earn the review. And in terms of what, what we're offering to listeners, if you go to paintermarketingpros.com forward slash Sherwin, um, we will actually do a review generation campaign for you. So if you have a list of past customers, past prospects, we will actually help you uh, stack your reviews by reaching out to them in a strategic way. Fantastic. Juan, do you have any advice for our listeners? God, it's hard to top that. I mean, how do you do it? Um, <laughs> Juan, well, you can do it, man. What, so Juan and I are actually about to do a whole podcast series together. We're we're basically ah uh, yeah, yeah nice, we're, we're nice. with the Painter Market Mastermind podcast. We have a was it four five five episodes? You said five, so you got five. me on the hook for it. All right, five. so it's five. So we're gonna do a six episode series coming up then. Okay. Well, honestly, um, I think that uh, so what we're doing from our part, I think from the, you know, the contractor side is um, we're actually implementing a CRM. We've never had a CRM in our company before, but and so that's kind of hard to have a record of your clients and existing clients and everything. The CRM makes it so much easier and it is very important. You know, you cannot go out there and ask for a review. You have to look at your establishment, your company, your business, and see: Do you uh, earn? Did you earn that review? You know, are you worthy of that review? So you have to do everything in your business. So when you are asking, you're not asking for something out of line. You know, you just basically it's just to complement your services and what you're doing. So that, from my humble part, I think that will be, um, you know hard to start and then you follow up with uh, strategically how Brandon says. Yeah, provide a shoddy service, ask for a review and, and you'll get rewarded with your one star review that you asked for. Right, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, very good. Don't do that. Great. Great. Well, fantastic. So thank you all so much for providing your expertise on this subject. And we are now going to hop into the live question and answer session with our audience and see what they have to say. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the conversation with Juan and Brandon, Gabby and Julie. So now we're going to flip over to the live portion of the webinar. Please feel free to use the chat to ask questions of Juan, Brandon, Gabby or myself. Um, I see we already have a question from Bonito Painting. And the question is, are the reviews highly relevant when you work as a subcontractor with big contractors? I think it depends on your goal. So if you're if you're a subcontractor, obviously that's going to be mostly relationship driven. I don't think the <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think the public reviews are as much of a factor there. You probably have done work for the GCs you work for. They know you and they they rely on you for that reason. But if you if you I like to keep options open. So when I do business, I like to keep options open, especially when that leads to a more profitable business model. If you're a subcontractor, you might want to not be a subcontractor one day, or you might want to start generating some of your own leads and kind of do a slow transition. And that in that uh, matter, obviously, it would matter a tremendous amount. Of course, the relationship dynamic, you know, you have to figure out how that works exactly with the GC. If you're working with other painting companies and not a GC, then of course, you, you're probably not going to actually be able to secure that review for yourself. But there's never a downside to generating five star reviews. So while we wait for uh, folks to not be so shy and add some additional questions, mm -hmm. a couple things wanted to follow up on. One, you had talked about, you know, asking for reviews. Sometimes people can be a little intimidated or feel nervous to do that. Um, have you ever had that experience? Or what are some tips you had to overcome that? Or maybe folks on your team? Um, well, I think I think it starts, like I said, with the team. Um, it all has to do with how you're working in your company. Are you the one asking for the leads? I mean, are you asking for the reviews or is someone else in your company is asking for the reviews? Um, how you ask for them, just like, you know, just like Brandon said here, um, we actually now when you go into our website, when you go into a lot of our promotional things there, you know, can leave a review here for us. So there's actually a space for it. So without asking, there's already a place for someone to put a review. So that's another way to ask for it without having to ask for it. Um, I think um, I would really like to touch on that just the last thing that Brandon said, because this applies for us here in California quite a bit. Um, I actually spoke quite a bit with Juan uh, from Bonito Painting. Love this guy. Um, <laughs> 
you know, what works for us is like, okay, we're soft contract and soft contractors, right? So we work with the general uh, GC. Um, maybe we're not going to get a, a, re a review from him, but what we do is like we would do a project with the general, but then after that, most of our work, it's going to be now as the maintenance. So now after the general, we will have a relationship with the owner. So now when we come to the owner, we should have some kind of a process to do that. So now we're going to come to the owner and say, hey, we already worked with you through the GC. Now we're going to work together. This is how we work. And you now you're setting the, you know, uh, the expectations, just like we talked about it in our discussion earlier. So um, it's understanding, like I said, at the end of the day, you have to understand your business. There are different ways of asking and bringing value into this relationship, and that's what you're going to get in return. But it's just very unique um, situations, at least for us in California. That's yeah. awesome. Gabby, do you see any questions in the chat? I did see a few questions. Before I go to the question, I did have a follow-up question for uh, Juan really quick. I know we were talking about reviews. So um, whenever you do ask customers to provide reviews, have you or Brandon requested like for them, for customers to upload pictures? Do you feel that has value in the review? Hmm. I, I, I've never asked that, you know, uh, I never have. Um, you know, I've seen, um, so I follow different painting contractors throughout the country, and there's a lot of guys who get very creative. And so now what they're creating, it's a whole campaign for their business, you know? Right. So that's, so it just come, it comes down to that. Um, like I said, for us and our reviews, um, if you go to our website, it's, uh, it's very simple. We only put captions, very small captions of them, but they're very, um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? They're, they come from people who are very respected. So anyone in our, in our area are going to know who these persons are. And they're like, wow, if you, if this person's talking well about you, then I want to work with you. If, um, as we talked earlier, if I was if I was doing more repaints, small repaints and volume work, I think I would do everything I can to not just have that review, but maybe have some pictures, some testimonials, I mean, because now that's it's going to elevate and there's going to be a lot more unknown people, new people that are going to come into. So, yes, it does bring a lot of value. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Juan. So here, our next question is coming from Noah. It says, our business has expanded into contracting as well as painting. How do we differentiate reviews between smaller jobs to bigger jobs? Huh. What do you say to that, Brandon? I'm not sure. Come on, you're the expert, buddy. Well, I, I just, I guess I don't understand why you would want to. You know, a five star review is a five star review. The more, generally, the more detailed the review is, the more people trust it. Obviously, if you did a, you know, a really phenomenal job on, on a massive house or commercial project, you would want them to talk in detail about some of the stuff that you did. I think the way that you can differentiate is through photos. Photo uploads is another thing, so relate, very related to what we're talking about here. but. Obviously, you'd want to prioritize the really beautiful photos and the bigger projects over the smaller ones, but you should you should try to get that five star review from them both. Also, use names. So having people people use names of, of let's say your project manager um, or your, even your estimated really anyone on the job site, the more personal, the more detailed, the more specific these reviews are, the farther it goes in terms of what's called conversion in terms of buying trust and getting people to actually move forward with you because of the review. Great advice. Um, Ethan asks, is posting reviews to social media too attention seeking or is that something that helps? Um, before you answer that, Brandon, I feel like we've had lots of conversations on other webinars about social media and people feeling really weird about like, is it too braggy? Is It's weird sharing so much about myself. My personal opinion is if you have great reviews, why wouldn't you share that on social media? Um, but I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah, and Juan so as well. <laughs> Yeah, so as part of our service, we do social media posting. One of the things we'll do is actually uh, create a really cool looking graphic. So I think it's kind of braggy and, and sort of obnoxious if it's just the text. But if you create a really nice graphic around it and put it, and if it's not just that. So we follow the 80-20, 80% of your content should not be salesy. It should be, you can do projects. Projects isn't salesy if you're not obnoxious about it. So you can do before, afters, you can do things like that. You can do motivational. 
you can do hey did you know you know interesting facts whatever but uh, reviews you absolutely should should include them it would be a mistake uh, to not include them and i think you can do it in a very a very tactful way we do that's all awesome. have you guys ever shared um, you know honestly um i think we all know uh, we all have an intention of why we use social media um I think as uh, I've noticed, probably there are some companies who don't really have a, a motive of why they have social media, so they're mixing everything together. Uh, I like that thing that uh, Brandon said about the 80-20. Um, I've seen some very cool uh, and very nice uh, reviews that people have, uh, you know, the big post, like the painters. The one thing that I always see is that, um, and I, I always see Nick put in these reviews, they're the handwritten notes. And I really think that I would love to put those on because that's that's a very nice touch, you know. So you're it's not that you waking up every morning you're just saying, oh look how many reviews I got. No, but your story is going through it, and you're talking about a job, and then guess what? You got a review from that job. What a great way to follow that story with that review, you know. So yeah, no, of course, as long as you have an intention and as long as you use it, however it is that you want to use it, I think it's important. I mean, social media is. I mean, it, it connects us all. So no, I, I, I would do it. Just, I think that 80, 20, it's amazing. Christine, I want to add one more thing. Thanks Juan to that. It's the psychology of that question. It's what a lot of us feel. It's, it's the timid. It goes back to what I talked about, even being afraid to ask for the rest of the, you know, the payment or being afraid to ask for the review. I think if you know that your painting company does solid work, if you know that you stand behind your product, and that you, you know, the homeowners or, or commercial property owners are better off after you, they hired you than they were before, then you were actually doing them a disservice by not letting them know that. Because there are so many right. shady contractors or so many shady painting companies. And, and if you're a good one and you don't let them know, hey, you know, I'm a good one. If you use me, you're going to get a good result and I'm going to stand behind it. Well, then they very well may choose a bad one. So you're almost doing them a disservice by not letting them know about your reviews. Yeah, I love the idea of pairing a review with some um, imagery before and after, too. I think that's a really yeah. nice combination. Um, Gabby, do you want to handle the next question? Yeah, Jeff, absolutely. Jeffrey? Thanks, Christine. Yes. So Jeffrey here, he kind of has uh, some background here. He mentioned that him and his son just started a painting, uh, painting and handyman company in May. And um, they've done pretty well and have asked they've asked all their clients who are very satisfied uh, with their work for some reviews. But their problem is that they are tailoring to uh, senior citizens and they really don't know, um, I guess, how to use, you know, technology and they might be disinterested. So any, I guess, advice for them, Juan and Brandon, that you ha might have for them? Um, I can start with that, right? Um, my mom is 62 years old. Oh, oh. I'm saying her age, she's going to get mad at me. <laughs> but you know what? You know, something that I see my mom, she's on TikTok. She is on Facebook. She is on Instagram. She she has a lot more time on her hands. So all I'm saying is that th we're all on our phones. So we all are in social media. So I don't know how elderly you are or, uh, or what that, you know, what that treasure is. But most of us are. So I don't see, like I said, if we go back to just how can they ask or how how would that work, right? From the old, old elderly community, is that what you're asking? Correct. Okay. Uh, I mean, a lot of times um, as business owners, we need to know our market and we need to know how our market works and what is going to work. So I guess at that point, I will really have to sit down and maybe talk to a couple of them and get their point of view what they do, how is it they communicate, and then I will go from there. Yeah, it's a great point. And I think you need to make it easy as possible on the customer, right? So for for elderly people, they might be a little bit less technically inclined. As Juan said, they probably have a smartphone still. That's where having a customer happiness card is what we call it with little QR codes. You know, hey, can I can I actually walk you through how to do this? We actually do it. it's only going to take a minute is that okay have them scan it right they might not have a google account so this is something else that happens they don't have a gmail account so they actually can't leave you a google review then <clears throat> penny company owners ask well should i have them create 
it's not going to stick anyways because it's going to look fraudulent because it's a brand new Google account, so it doesn't matter. But then have a backup, have your Facebook review. They probably have a Facebook account. So if that doesn't work, or try to get them both, obviously, right? If they leave the Google, try to go ahead and get the, the Facebook, but failing to plan is planning to fail. So having all this stuff, and if Jeff, if it's you and your son, I would imagine these are pretty personal projects. You're working with elderly. You're probably there for some period of time. It's very, very, I would assume intimate because uh, it's you two at the company at this point. You could potentially sit down with them with your computer and just help them. You know, like, oh, hey, do you have Facebook? Like, do you mind if, you know, if you, if you have that kind of relationship, obviously that's not really going to work for a lot of companies, but for you guys, it might. A lot I also want to remind me of, I'm sorry, go on ahead. Go ahead oh, sorry. On. I think it brings me back to what I just said about the handwritten notes. That's you exactly know? what I was going to say. That's just, That's exactly there it is. Say. I know that is something they would love to do. So finding what is your, you know, your, your market and working and, and uh, you know, looking for those accommodations. That's I want to exactly play devil's advocate say. for one second. <laughs> I, love hand, I love handwritten notes. I do. They're awesome, right? They're, they stand out. They look very intimate. People took the time. They're definitely not. I mean, it could be fake, but they're probably not fake. You know, I don't think a lot of people are faking that. My only hesitation would be you can only ask people so many things. And a handwritten note is a pretty big ask because they're, they're having to spend a while writing that. So we've we've talked with companies that are very into this. They, they call afterwards, they get the handwritten note, and they're very proud because they have a wall of handwritten notes. That's great. It's not going to improve your rankings. If you execute on it right, it can it can improve your conversions. You can show people. You can like like Juan said, put it up on social media. But you are making a trade, and you're basically choosing to not get as many online reviews because you're making this bigger ask. So, again, something to be aware of. If if you're not going to get the the online review, of course that's a phenomenal thing to get. But just be aware of the trade offs. Yeah, that's a really great point, Brandon. I I think it all comes back to you know knowing what your goal is for the ask. You know whether it's improving your ranking or, you know, helping with conversion once once uh, you have the opportunity to bid a job. Um, we have so many great questions. We have a question from Ethan. Where on a website is the best place to put testimonials and reviews? Yeah, so I, I, you, I, I, <laughs> you, I, I'm trying to not take like a massive dive here. So there, there's a, a above the fold and below the fold is what it's called on the website. So when you go to the website, what you first see before you do any scrolling is above the fold. So I would recommend including something there, right? So so something just to get them looped in. Um, or, at least, you know, again, I'm not going to go too far into this because there's a whole lot that ties into a converting website uh, and getting people to actually take action. But something above the fold often helps. We usually include ours around midway. So people scrolling a little bit. We have other things that we do to capture their attention and try to actually get them to convert as quickly as possible. But having we use a slider. So I don't like the static reviews, static reviews look pretty fake there are all kinds of widgets and technology you can use to pull in reviews from google and facebook and things like that that can up, be updated refreshed they're not going to pull in a one-star review you know people worry oh my gosh they're just gonna you know you set filters and everything for it but i would definitely keep that updated and we find either a little bit above the fold or about midway down centered you know you can't miss it awesome thank just you for that Brandon. yes we have, I believe it's Jody. She um, has a statement here. You know, she right now she has work. Uh, Jody is working at an industrial painting company, but uh, her husband has an electric business. So they like the tips that they're receiving from today, and then also in past webinars, they're asking if Facebook advertising is still relevant, and if you are able to share a little bit more about Google Ads. So okay, Brandon. Yep. So I am. I we've run <laughs> Google Ads for. I'm going to go ahead and say we're not running those for electrical companies. So electricians, I don't know exactly where it's at with that. For painters, I don't like pay-per-click ads right now. I do not. We used to run a lot of them a year, year and a half ago. Knocked out of the park. Eighty, hundred dollars a lead all day. Right now, those leads, the same leads that we were getting for eighty, hundred dollars, are oftentimes two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars. We'll have people come in and say, "Oh, that's crazy. You know, we get leads for forty dollars or fifty dollars." You start looking into their metrics that they just don't understand how Google Ads works. So the, the metrics are not the same. They're either doing brand campaigns or competitor campaigns or, or they're doing the display network. So all their leads are basically just painters looking for a job or whatever it is. They're not truly qual quality leads. Facebook ads, yes, phenomenal. The key to Facebook ads, the meta ads, Facebook and Instagram is the sales process. So we tied into a CRM. We do an automated follow-up. There's a, a uh, 
There is a concept called speed to lead. It's interruption-based advertising. They are not looking for you. Google Ads is intent-based advertising. They're looking painter near me, you know, interior painter, house painter. They, they're cash in hand. They're ready to go. Facebook, they're looking at pictures of cats and their cousin and you name it. <laughs> and then boom, there's a painting ad, right? So you, they have kind of a short attention span at that point. They're, they're a colder lead. But if you pull them into an automated funnel, if you have, we have a feature called Quick Connect where it actually gets you on the phone with them right away. If you do stuff like that, we find we're able to ultimately convert like, actually into a paying project around 30% of those leads. So for all of our partners, 30% of leads that come in are actually turning into a residential repaint. So it's not bad. But again, the sales process, the targeting, we do stuff where it's more personal. You don't want to be, hey, ad. Hey, we're an ad. Nobody's looking for an ad. So you, there are certain things that you need to do to make Facebook and, and Instagram successful, but I like them way more than pay-per-click. Also, LSAs, local service ads. If you're not doing those, you should be. Juan, do you have any experience or any any thoughts on the, do you guys do Facebook advertising and Google ads? Uh, we don't, like like I mentioned, you know, um, most of our clients are very, you know, uh, most of our clients, we get them from GCs and these are repeated clients. Uh, most of our clients are very high end clients. Um, most of the jobs, we don't even meet the client. We meet the designer, the architect and the contractor. So, um, in our business, there's, we don't really, there's not a need for it. You know, uh, I do believe though, that by being, um, uh, the more you have out there, it just gives you more, it just gives you more of a sense of like, yeah, credibility. But we don't do a lot of these stuff. We don't do it to get leads. We do it to just stay more relevant, to be more in front of our clients and the audience. That's why we do it. That brand Facebook awareness. Ad. Are you looking for a $500,000 painting project? We can help you. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> yeah, no. So, but but if you are doing, but if you are in that repaint um, business, you do. I think that's that's amazing because you just you have to keep them coming. You know. Uh, for us, unfortunately, well, fortunately, it's, that's not the case. Good problem to have, huh, Juan? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a problem <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so Robert asks, how much lead-in time do you spend with your client in an initial contact? What do you mean? So I, I'm sorry, I didn't get that right. How was it? How much? How much lead in time do you spend with your client in an initial contact? I'm assuming they mean how much time do you spend with someone, a client, the first time you meet with them? Is that what you meant, Robert, if you're still on the on the call? That's kind of what it seems like. That's what it seems like he's asking. Yeah. Um, I think it, it has to do with clients. You know, I. Uh, I can spend 10 minutes walking a small project with a client and I can spend two hours with the client going over not just the aspect of the job, but sometimes even personal, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just getting personal and why they should choose us and why we're the, you know, why we are a good match for their business. But that's, you know, I guess it, it really depends on the client. I would say that you want to have a lot of time in the beginning to really um, to hear them out, to understand their need. So I would give it enough time. I don't know what enough time is. I think, well, you know, maybe I don't know, half an hour. Do you trying to make the sale right on the spot? Then you will need at least. I remember we had this um, conversation way back a couple of years ago where you wanted to have uh, all the make all the decision making uh, individuals when you are giving an estimate, right? So meaning if, you, if Mrs. Smith is going to be there, Mr. Smith should be there if he's going to be part of the decision making, and if it's going to take you half an hour, but you shouldn't, so that we are closing that deal that time. I think that's where it matters, right? Yeah, I think it comes down to knowing your client and adjusting your style to what they need. Um, it's usually pretty a pretty good rule of thumb. Um, while we may have a lot of questions too, right? A lot of follow up questions, so that has a lot to do with it. And the way you present could end up in your review, right? If you're rushing them, yeah. if you're acting, you know, annoyed or kind of dismissive, that those are things that could end up in the review or could impact the review. So, uh, to Brandon's exactly. point, during the earlier conversation, it really starts from like the very beginning. It's a process to get to that five star review. 
So we've got about 10 more minutes left. We've hit all the questions. If anyone has any additional questions, please put them in the chat now. While we give folks a couple more minutes, Brandon, can you tell everybody where they can find you? And can you talk a little bit more about what you are offering to our guests today to help them on their ratings and review journey? Yep, yeah, so you can go to paintermarketingpros.com forward slash Sherwin. So paintermarketingpros.com forward slash Sherwin. And we are offering to any new partners that come on board uh, after listening to listening to this webinar that actually come through that page, we are going to do a free review generation campaign as well as a free uh, repeat business campaign and referral campaign. So this means if you have a customer list, if you've been in business really for any length of time, a year or more, there's gonna be a lot of value here because you probably have data. You probably have people who didn't leave you a review who would have if you had approached it maybe a little bit differently when you conducted the project. We know how to reach out. We know the cadence to reach out to actually help you secure those reviews. Um, and then we also know how to reach out for referral and repeat business and what that looks like. So we'll basically set up a campaign and run it for you uh, complimentary. Wow, awesome. that's nice. So I also wanted to remind everyone too that obviously there is a Sherwin-Williams in your neighborhood. Please stop in the store, talk to your store manager if you have questions, if you need help. Um, you know, we exist to help painters be strong and grow their businesses, and we're super excited to help. Contact your local store manager, contact your rep. We've got so many wonderful business tools and different uh, forms of support that we can offer that's just value added for being uh, part of our Pro Plus program at Sherwin-Williams. So at this time, we don't have any other questions. Any other parting can thoughts? I, yeah, Juan. Can I can I bring something up? Um, so I've mentioned in the past, like I, I you know, Illusions has been in business since 2006. Uh, for a very long time, we did not look into networking, into other ways to grow our business. And so, the last five years, we've been the last five years we've been doing that. And one thing that I want to bring up is Sharon Williams has a lot of resources that us painters do not know about. Um, I do. Um, uh, I am part of the. Um, we do webinar, not webinars, but our presentations. These are our repaints uh, conferences, and they do them throughout the states. So, like Christine here said, talk to your sales rep, to your managers, uh, attend to these events. You know, when you attend to these events, that's how you start learning about who's out there, what kind of services they're out there. You got to go out there and look for these services instead of just being painting in your business. So the resources are there. We as business owners have to go look for them. They are there for free. And Sherwin really has a lot to offer. So now uh, please. Uh, also for me, uh, you guys can reach out to me. I am uh, part of the PCA. We are working in different um, uh events and, and different ways to just bring more awareness. So, uh, you know, you can reach out to me at illusions.painting and in Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'm not going to give my number because then, <laughs> but <laughs> no, but you can reach out to us and I'll be very happy to point at the direction of maybe somewhere or how that you can get the results or the answers that you're looking for. Juan, do you want to address the Pintando para ganar? Pintando para ganar, that's right. So we are going to have the first Hispanic or Spanish uh, conference uh, ran by PCA, and we are going to be in Orlando, Florida on uh, September 29th. Um, we, myself, is going to be one of the presenters. Uh, Brandon is going to be there presenting in Espanol, right? Yeah. And then, uh, so we're going to be giving a lot of information. Everything's going to be in Spanish. This is so amazing because it's the first time that we do this. So if you guys are in the Orlando area, September 29th, it's called Pintando para Ganar. Uh, you can look it up as well on all social media with PCA. Uh, if you can attend to these events, um, that's this is something that really has changed a lot of us because now we're out there looking for not just what paint to put on the wall, but how can we, uh, excel and, and create a very more sustainable business. No, that's great. And I'm really glad you brought up, um, obviously, the Sherwin resources, but also the PCA resources. There's lots of things out there for uh, painters. Um, along the lines of PCA, they are hosting their first Women in Paint event November 3rd and 4th. 
in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I will be there presenting. So that's really exciting as well. So again, there's lots of things out there. Um, Juan, I really appreciate you offering and, and Brandon both your your support and your services to others. I think that's what's so incredible about this community is that, you know, I find that the good ones really do want to help each other and, and lift up the the industry and see each other succeed. And if someone who is as knowledgeable as Juan and Brandon offer that, take them up on it. Love it. And, and contact if you guys, your Sherwin rep. <laughs> contact yes. your yeah, right? Rep. There you go. <laughs> and if you guys like no, the, uh, the vibe of Juan and, and me. We did just conduct, what did it end up being? What was it, Juan, five episodes? You got promised you yes. six, but I don't know where we ended. Five or six episodes. I think it was five. five, it was five, it was five. I don't think yeah. I can do six. I, I can't fit six yet. Give me Juan another 10 years and I probably will. Okay. <laughs> and go to your show. No, website. but we also, we, also, we also conduct a uh, uh, podcast ourselves. It's called Los Pintores Podcast. So what we do is we showcase uh, painting contractors throughout the country, and it's just exposing them, showing their story, where they come from, what they're doing, their unique experiences in their businesses. And it's a great way to create and build a community. You know, I am very uh, into the whole Hispanic community. I, it's a very close to my heart, um, you know, uh, um, well, the whole thing is very close to my heart. I'm, you know, I'm Mexican, and so, I'm really looking forward for that. So anyone who's looking for anything or advice or anything, please reach out to me and I'll be very happy to um, see what I can do to help. Gabby, take us home. <laughs> anything well, else? That is it. I mean, we you know we talked a lot about, you know, Juan mentioned we have a lot of tools and resources to really help our customers. We just, you know, reach out to your rep. We have a lot of local events happening in the districts. We have a lot of new concepts that are going to be uh, rolling out in 2024. I know we've been working a lot of tools and resources, Christine and, and team here with the, within the marketing department. But again, you know, there there is a lot of tools and resources available for you guys, you know, for all of the painters, you know, converting to business owners. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to help. So really appreciate you, 